Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to be talking about setting up SQL Workbench with Redshift Connection. This is the agenda. So we're going to install SQL Workbench slash J, uh, import the Redshift driver, um, create a sample table and data, and then alter the Redshift security group to allow for remote access. So one thing that you're going to make sure you, you need to have uh, for SQL Workbench is to have the JDK installed. I'll make sure that there's a link in the description for you. You're also going to want to have a Redshift cluster already running. Uh, so you can refer to Lesson 1A or Lesson 1B for that. Uh, these are the provided links that I'll give in the description. All right, so let's just get started with uh, first installing SQL Workbench. So what you're going to want to do there is you're going to navigate to sqlworkbench.edu, uh, edu, EU, sorry, uh, slash downloads. And we're going to click on this first one, generic packages for all systems, including all optional libraries. Uh, so I already have it downloaded. You go into your finder. I have it right here. So it comes in as a zip. I just unzipped it. And the first command you're going to want to run is the SQL workbench.sh. So if I go in here, let's just make sure I'm um, Go back one. Are any downloads here? There they are. All right. I'm just going to run bash SQL work. Bench.sh. And that opens um, that opens up SQL Workbench. Um, you could also open it up by the jar file now that you have the JDK installed. The next thing that you're going to want to do is um, download the um, the Redshift driver. So the way you can do that, I'll provide this link, uh, but it's in within the uh, Redshift documentation. We will get this first one. Save it. Use zip. If you open it, there will be this jar file, Redshift JDBC 4.2. Um, so that's the one that we're going to want. We're going to go back into the SQL Workbench, and you're going to go to Manage Drivers, and we'll do. Create a new entry, call it Redshift Driver. And then we'll locate that driver that we just got. Okay. And now we should be able to find that. So there is an uh, already comes pre built Amazon Redshift. It is a different version. So the one that gets downloaded is just a little bit of a newer version. So we'll kind of stick with the newer version. So if you go Redshift driver. All right. And then we'll look at first creating this connection. So what you're going to want to do to create the connection is you're going to need the URL. So if you go to Redshift, you go into your cluster. You go to properties, 
go to view all connection details and then you should see the JDBC URL. You'll copy that. You will put that in there and you'll find the username that you made. So AWS user. And then the password. Um, so what we'll do there. Let's see what we name the password. I kind of forget actually. Let's see. That should... See if that is the password. I forget which one it is. We'll try that. Okay. I'm going to go in back into the connection, put that password now. But before this will actually work, uh, you need to edit your security group. Um, so if you go, if you're still in the properties here and you scroll down, you'll see network and security. Shows you the VPC that you're in, the default subnet, and then it shows the security group over here. So you're going to want to go to your security group. Um, and then you'll go to inbound rules underneath here. So we have everything, all traffic, all protocols, all port ranges, but only for the security group that this Redshift cluster is in. So what we're going to do, so we're gonna edit the inbound rules and add a rule. We're gonna find our IP address. So we can do that by running this specific command, IP config get this. And then you see our IP address right there. So we're going to copy this. Um, you're going to put your IP address in. And then I would just make it slash 32 so that it's only the single address that's being allowed. Now, this is something to note. Uh, you, you, this is just a, a starting point. You're not going to want to actually, it's not the most secure way of doing this. So I would only do this for the time being just to establish an initial connection. Um, and in a later video, I, I'll give the more appropriate way of connecting to your Redshift cluster. So we're just going to save that rule. Um, all right, now that we have that established, we can go back into SQL Workbench and try this connection. Let's we'll call this I read share connection. I'll pause the video until this connects. All right, so initially I actually didn't connect. Uh, what I did do was edit the, um, the security group. And when I went in there, there is an option for my IP. And that particular IP address, whitelisting that IP address, allowed me to connect. So now I am connected in here. And I have a couple queries I'm just going to run and we'll make sure that it works with these queries. So I'm going to do a create table query here. All right. So just created this table. Animals. Um, now we'll insert into this table some values. All right, and now just let's do a select all from animals. And there we go. Right, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you.